So when we're balancing equations, one thing that's really important, this is like a prime rule, is we can change the numbers in front called the coefficients. Right now there's nothing written. That means there's a one in front of each of these. We can change these numbers when we balance equations. What we can't change though are the numbers that are written afterwards. If there's nothing written, we assume it to be a one. But we can't change these numbers. These are called subscripts. When you balance equations, can't change the subscripts. Okay, so that's the first rule. Let's balance this equation. First thing I'll do is count up the atoms on each side. This is the reactant side. I have zinc, hydrogen, and then the chlorine atom. So I'll just copy this and put it on the other side. I have one zinc atom, one hydrogen, and one chlorine. On the product side, I have one zinc, two hydrogen atoms, and two chlorine atoms. So by writing this kind of counting ledger out of all the atoms, I can see what I need to do to balance the equation. It looks like if I could get these to both be two, the equation would be balanced. I can change the coefficient in front of the HCl. I can make this a two. So now I have one hydrogen times two. That'll give me two hydrogen atoms. Those are balanced. One chlorine times the two. That gives me two of those. Everything's the same. This equation is balanced. So remember, you can only change the numbers in front. You can't change the little numbers, the subscripts, afterwards. So now you can try one. Pause and balance this equation. So this is how I did it. If you didn't get this answer, there's a link in the description and a card here, and you can watch the full video on this equation. Let's take a look at another one, though. This is something that gives people a little bit of a problem. So let's count the atoms up. We have one sodium, two hydrogens, and one oxygen on the reactant side. On the products, we have one sodium, two hydrogens, plus we've got to count this one hydrogen here. So we have a total of three hydrogen atoms. Often people will count one of them and forget the others. So make sure you count all of the hydrogens. And we have one oxygen. To balance the equation, this one's a little bit odd. We have a three and a two. So how do we deal with that? Normally, when we have an odd number, we want to get it to be even. So to do that, if I put a coefficient of two in front of the NaOH, I have one times two. So now I have two of the sodium atoms. I have one times two. So I have two oxygen atoms. And for the hydrogen, let's update that. We have one times two plus we have these two. So now we have four hydrogen atoms. Okay. Let's fix the hydrogens now by putting a coefficient of two in front of the H2O. Two times two, that gives us four. So you see how getting that even number made it easy to fix the hydrogens. For the oxygens, we have the one times the two. That gives us two. So those are balanced. And since sodium's all by itself, we could put a coefficient of two, one times two, and that gives us two. And we're done. This equation is balanced. So two things. Make sure you count all of the hydrogens, and then if you have an odd number, try to get that to be even. So if you're not comfortable balancing these type of kind of basic chemical reactions, there's a link in the description and there's a card to a playlist with more practice. So give that a try if you need a little more practice. If not, let's take a look at combustion reactions and then at double displacement reactions, how we balance those. We'll start with a double displacement reaction. These look actually pretty intimidating, but they're not too bad if you know one trick. So let's do this. We have Cu, we have one of those, and then I see this SO4, it's a polyatomic ion. I have it right here, and it stays together. I have it over here again. So I'm just gonna write SO4 as one item. That'll make things a lot easier. Sodium, I have one of those, and then the hydroxide, OH, I have it here, it stays together, I have it here. So I can just write OH, I have one of those. And I have one copper, one sulfate, two sodiums, and then one hydroxide times two. So I have two of those. And now when we look at this equation, all we need to double is the sodium and the hydroxide. If I put a two here, one times two, that'll give me two sodium atoms. And the hydroxide, the one hydroxide times two, that gives me two. And we're done. This equation is balanced. So you can see how tidy it is, how very kind of neat it is when we count these 
polyatomic ions as just one thing, as long as they're on both sides of the equation. Either way, we get the same coefficients. This just works a lot better. So pause and give this one a try. Here's how I did it. This one is a bit more challenging, but it's the same idea. We have our sulfate here and here, so we count that as one thing. There's a link in the description and a card if you want to watch a full video on how to balance this equation. Okay, let's take a look at combustion reactions. So this is a combustion reaction. We have hydrocarbon plus oxygen, and we end up with carbon dioxide and water. So if you see carbon dioxide and water in the products, and then you have oxygen and a hydrocarbon, that's going to be combustion. And you need to be a little careful. So I've counted all of the atoms up, the two oxygens and the one here. Be careful there. I have three of those. So now I'm going to try to balance it. One of the things with combustion reactions is leave the oxygens till last. So let's balance this. We could put a two here, one times two. That'll give me two carbons. Let's update these oxygens though, because they've changed. We have two times two. That's four plus the one oxygen. So now we have five oxygen atoms. Let's do the hydrogens. We put a three here, two times three. That gives us six. And then we need to change the oxygens one more time here. Let's see. We have two times two. That's the four. Plus we have one times three. That's three. So now we have seven. And this is where it gets very difficult for people. Everything's balanced, but we have seven and two. And here's the trick that we'll use we can use fractions. So we know two times something will give us seven. Two times seven over two, that gives us seven. So we could just put seven over two as our coefficient and we're done. This equation's balanced. Some teachers don't like fractions. They want whole numbers, but that's no big deal. We could just put brackets around this and multiply all the coefficients by two. Two times one, that becomes two. 2 times 7 over 2, that's 7. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. So you could also have these coefficients up here. Those would be correct as well. When we balance equations, we're really interested in the ratio. So both of these are right, but sometimes teachers, they like those whole numbers. All right, so pause and give this one a try. So this is a little bit challenging. You'll use fractions, and remember, you're going to do the oxygens last. So you should end up with coefficients of 2, 13, 8, and 10. So I'll move these down here, and then you can try to balance the equation. So hopefully, you were able to work it out and get these coefficients here. If not, there's a link in the description and a card with a video on how to do this specific reaction. So that's it. Those are the main types of chemical equations that you'll need to balance as you do your chemistry work. This is Dr. B with How to Balance Chemical Equations, and thanks for watching.